Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-33. Our last episode featured a mysterious letter from the Garmin indicating that the giant's arrival on the island was not by accident. It appears that the theft of the heart was intentional and was designed to bring about a giant invasion to Denali for unknown reasons. The party had healed themselves and began a slow journey back to the Denali capital. The arrival of the Flying Porpoise was a welcome sight, but a small armada of ships showed that the party that the invasion was underway. We begin several hours later as the party's vessel is slowly being overtaken by the giants. The party watched from the bow of the deck as a total of five giant vessels bore down on them. <sighs> They're catching up, said a concerned Yolanda. I'm not sure if we can take them all either, especially on the water. The group began to mull over their possibilities of combat, and Phidias grew bored. He laid down on the deck and began to fiddle with a crystal stick located in one of the boxes that had been found in the giant's cave. Perhaps it's an ear cleaner, as he stuck the item into his head. Or perhaps it evaluates health when stuck in the mouth. His face soured as he clearly tasted the earwax from his prior orifice. He withdrew the item, spitting out the taste, and began to tap it against his forehead, muttering to himself. What do you do, my little stick? What do you do indeed? He looked up at the item from his resting position and noticed something as the failing light struck it. They're definitely gaining. Look, oars, yelled out the captain. Sound the alarm! The captain left the rest of the party at the back of the ship to ready his crew to be overtaken. Stance spoke up first. Great. Oars. They will be on us in no time. A faint whizzing noise was heard as a giant spear, launched from one of the pursuing vessels, fell into the water not twenty yards from the flying porpoise. Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus, got a sour look on his face. Great. They have ballistas. That is fantastic. He unsheathed the sword and prepared himself by taking a knee and praying to his deity. Yolanda and Grish looked at each other. We aren't too far from the coast, Yolanda said. I can probably swim to land and find a mount to give advanced warning. Grish shook his head. Those are sheer cliffs and despite your nimbleness, one fall would be your end and your efforts would all be for naught. I think we need you here anyway. Phidias the rogue approached, still holding the crystal wand. Hey, Harris, what does Camulus mean? Camulus, replied the mage. I have no idea why. Phidias held the wand up against the dying red sun and showed the wizard where a faint inscription was present on the item. Stance looked over their shoulders as he too was curious. Harris repositioned the gnome's arm as he held the wand aloft and squinted. I... I don't see anything, replied the mage. There, said Stance. Angle the wand more where he ordered. The mage confirmed he saw the inscription. It's not... It's not Camulus, he said. It's pronounced Cumulus, and it means clouds or storm clouds. Phidias smiled broadly and replied, Ah, Cumulus and a large bolt of lightning leapt from the wand, knocking the gnome backwards against the deck. The rest of the party hunched over from the explosion as the loud crack went over their shoulders. They watched the bolt travel into the sky above. Dear Bacchus, exclaimed the knight. The captain ran into the back of the ship, yelling what happened, asking if one of the missile weapons had struck the boat. 
The party wordlessly pointed up to the skies where the clouds began to swirl faster and faster. The wisps darkened and began to swirl down towards the ocean in a tube-like formation between the flying porpoise and the pursuing giant ships. Wow! exclaimed Phidias, still holding the crystal wand. As the clouds touched, the churning waves began to float up and the tube began to expand. A slack-jawed captain began to mutter the words until they became a yell. Hurricane! The sails of the ship filled and expanded quickly, lurching the Denali ship forward, knocking everyone to the deck. Lightning hopped across the sky and a torrent of water began to pepper the ship as the winds carried it out of the storm. Crewmen skittered across the deck of the ship as they attempted to harness the ropes holding the strained sails. The captain could be seen yelling, but the storm absorbed all of his sound. Grish had grabbed Harris as he was nearly pitched over the side of the ship and finally pulled him back to the deck. Hang on, everyone, he yelled as the party grabbed a hold of each other. At one point, the flying porpoise was lurched out of the air and landed heavily, causing everyone to again be smashed against the deck. A loud tearing sound was heard and one of the aft sails split into two. The loose fabric snapped into one sailor, pitching him over the rough waters. Looking back, Brother Stance noticed that the storm had created a barrier between themselves and the pursuing giants. As the winds pushed the small ship forward, the party was able to regain their feet. Safely out of the way of the storm, they looked at Phidias, still sitting squarely on the deck, holding the crystal wand. That was so awesome! Did you see what I did? I saved us. I love this thing. What was that word again? He asked. A chorus of no came from the rest of the party and the captain. Harris staggered over to the rogue and displayed his open hand, signaling that he wanted the wand. Dejected, the smallest member of the party let out a moan and grudgingly turned over the magic item to Harris, who hid it among the folds of his robe. This bullshit came the reply from the gnome, but again the wizard extended his hand to help him up. You did save us, and we are grateful, but let us count this as luck that we weren't sucked under from the power of this thing. This is a dangerous magic, and probably not something you need to be having in the city, I think. Fine, but I want an extra cut of gold, he replied. The group shook their heads and laughed. Darkness fell, and the flying porpoise continued to sail along the coastline. An hour later, Homo and Stance stood at the back of the ship while the others took refuge in their quarters. The knight asked the monk if he saw anything. Shaking his head, a member of the Verte Order confirmed that he did not. The two stood wordlessly for a few minutes until the knight stated that he was going to turn in. As he walked away, Stance spoke up. We thought we had lost you, old friend. The knight stopped and paused. Turning, he looked at the monk and smiled. I'm not that easy to get rid of, old friend. The two nodded to each other, and Omel retired for a night of sleep. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.